You're in a good place now. You are listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, I want to impart some knowledge, okay? As a therapist and as a celebrity life coach, I see clients every day. And oftentimes, many clients are unaware of why they're in certain situations in their current life. I often hear clients talk about codependency in relationships. I also hear many clients have a low self-esteem and a weak sense of themselves. It's interesting how I often hear clients talking about boundary issues and how they seem to be the doormat for everybody they know. Oftentimes, many clients as well feel guilt and shame about wanting to live their own life instead of doing what everybody else wants them to do. I find oftentimes as well that many of us feel empty inside, that we don't seem to love ourselves, and that we have a lot of trust issues. You know, I find it interesting too how oftentimes many of us have an inability to handle emotions and to express the way we feel honestly and to feel good about that expression it seems that many of us are scared to express how we feel because we're scared of how people will react we're scared about how somebody will take that and we're also scared about made made fun of or people don't understand us i also find that many of us have anxiety and depression And we don't know exactly where that came from or or why it's there. We look towards stress or our job or what have you, but that doesn't seem exactly right. And many of us, well, quite frankly, are people pleasers. And when we're people pleasers, what happens is what? We get walked all over. We get taken advantage of. We end up having a large group of people that like us, but... They like us for what we can do for them or how we make them feel. And it's interesting because we sit back and we analyze the situation and we wonder, do we have any real friends? But better yet, is there anybody on this planet that's not all about self? Today I'm going to expose some things that you may or may never have thought about. I'm going to give you the information and knowledge that you need to break these chains. And this is going to be a series of upcoming shows because we can't do all this in one show. It's just way too much information. Some people have been going to therapy for 20 years to learn about this stuff. And so it's going to take a breakdown of two to three shows to be able to adequately be able to expound for you to understand the situation. Why it happened and why you do what you do now at this time and place. In your life. Okay. So I bet you're wondering what I'm going to talk about today. I bet you're wondering, you're on the edge of your seat. Well, maybe not if you're driving, but you know, maybe you are. But I think I've gotten your attention. Because this impacts a lot of us. And the impact of what I'm going to illuminate will change your life forever. Because for the first time, you begin to connect the dots. For the very first time, you will have knowledge that is power that you can use to change the patterns of your life, to break the chains of codependency, and to help you see life in a different way. Okay, so let's begin the discussion on Live Your True Life Perspectives with me, your host, Ashley Burgess. Let's talk about that today because... You know, I find that a lot of us aren't aware of a situation. And I don't like to use the elephant in the room, you know, comment, because I love elephants. They're really sweet animals. They're very smart. And this is very different from that. So I want to ask the question, do you have narcissistic parents? Are your parents narcissists? Were they narcissists if they've already passed? 
Or are they narcissists if they're still with us today? Okay. So are you ready to go down this pathway with me and find out if you were raised by a narcissist mother, father, or both, and how that's impacted you in your day-to-day -day life as an adult? The quicker you get this information, the quicker you can make life changes. The quicker you can make life changes, the quicker you can be happy in your life. Because you know what? There's a lot of unhappiness right now in this world. And a lot of us don't understand why we're unhappy. We didn't really get it. We didn't see it. We can't see the forest through the trees. But right now, I'm going to pull back the forest a little bit. And I'm going to offer the light. I'm going to shine the light. I'm going to shine the light at the end of the tunnel. And you're going to see it. And you're going to walk toward it. Because it's time. Okay, let's begin today's discussion with the two different types of narcissists. When it, when it comes to narcissists, there's really two different types. Okay, the first one we have is the engulfing narcissist. Okay, when it comes to parents, these are the parents who see their children as extensions of themselves, right? Engulfing narcissistic parents become obsessively involved in the child's life to an extreme extent. When they get involved extensively in the child's life, they don't respect the child's boundaries and they don't acknowledge their boundaries. But even more than that, they don't acknowledge the child as a separate person. Okay, do you understand that? Like they don't acknowledge the, per the person, the child, as a separate person. Almost like, you know, Dr. Evil and Mini-Me or something like that. You see what I'm saying? It's almost like you're an appendage of the parent. Okay? And that's very interesting because in the beginning, um, well, I mean, in the beginning that feels good because we're getting a lot of attention. Okay? We're getting a lot of attention. But remember as a child, let me bring up something that's very important for you to recognize. The way we were raised, we don't, we weren't able to analyze healthy or unhealthy. Well, I was raised in an unhealthy household or I was raised in a healthy household. We see it as the only way we know. Okay, it's not like you had five different versions that you were able to, you know, choose from. And then you go, you know what, I think that version's uh, better. No, no. We had the one version. We had the one mom and dad or the one grandma and grandpa or the one aunt and uncle or the one adopted parents or whatever surrogate parents that we had. And those were the ones that raised us. And because we didn't know what healthy or unhealthy was, we went with it because that's all we had. Okay, it's the system. It's the protocol. You can't buck the system. You can't buck the protocol. It's part of the system. You are part of the system. Okay. And that's what happened. And so if you were dealing with an engulfing narcissist, I mean, your parents were pretty obsessed with you, okay? There was a, it was extreme, you know? They pushed you. They wanted you to excel. There were no boundaries, you know what I'm saying? There was, it was all about them, but kind of in the guise that it was all about you. And why is that? Because you are them. There is no... De defining definition there is no boundaries do you see what i'm saying i gave birth to you you are mine you are the most expensive asset i have okay you are way more expensive than a louis vuitton handbag an hermes collectible exotic handbag you are the most expensive item that i have okay do you get what i'm saying the children are parts and extensions of the parent. Meaning that it's not like they love you so much. It's about them loving them so much, and you happen to be a part of them. Okay. Now that we figure that out a little bit, we'll talk more about that because I think many of you will resonate with that you had that type of narcissistic parent or you currently do. Maybe some of them have kind of cooled their jets down. Maybe some of them have gotten better in their aging process. You never know because it can change a little bit depending on the work that the individual does as well as how much you're exposed to them as well as how much power they still have over you. Okay, if you're still living in the house, it could be a very different story than somebody that's been living outside of the house for 20 years, married with children. And so the power no longer belongs to the parent. 
And then a lot of times in those situations, the narcissist is either fighting for power or basically decides to kind of take the back seat and take what they can get. Oftentimes, too, remember, the narcissistic parent is based on the fact that they actually probably care more about themselves than you. So the fact that you're not around all that time allows them to put a little more time and effort into themselves. And so you understand it's almost like out of sight, out of mind. Okay. When I return, I'll be talking more about the engulfing narcissist as well as venturing into the ignoring narcissist where some of you might have had these types of parents. If you haven't already, check out my website. Go to it. See it. I got some new content up there. Go to Ashley Burgess, B-E-R-G-E-S dot com. Latest, greatest blogs and podcasts as well as video material. Stay tuned. Live your true life perspectives with me, your host, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back this time. We'll be back this time in two shakes. I'm ready to fly. Turn it up and jump in the deep end on perspectives. Now, here's Ashley. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. Today I'm talking about narcissistic parents. Was your mom and dad a narcissist? Are they currently narcissist? And what does that mean in your life? You know, I have clients that often come into my office and they're suffering with issues for codependency in relationships. They're in toxic relationships. There's a lot of guilt and shame in their life. A lot of self-loathing, a lot of emptiness, and a lot of issues with creating positive boundaries. And they wonder why and how they got there. Like, what was the reasons for going there? How did it happen to me? Am I a lesser of a person? Do I have less of power? What's wrong? Well, you know what it is? It's because the way you were raised directly led you to go down this path. Okay? And I know some people will say, oh, so now you're just going to say that the mom and dad were bad people. Da, 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 da. They're not bad people. They did as much as they could. However, if your mom and dad, either mom or dad, or both parents were narcissists when you were growing up and you were born and raised in a family like that and seeing that as normal, not for what it was, you were raised around that and you took that stuff with you throughout your teens, your 20s, your 30s, you took that stuff into your marriage. Do you see what I'm saying right now? And that's why some of us have made some not so good choices in our adult life. You know, right before the break, I was talking about an engulfing narcissist because there are two different types of narcissists out there when it comes to this situation. There's two different types. And the engulfing narcissist is the one that sees their kids as extensions to themselves. Yeah, the engulfing narcissist is obsessive about the child, okay? They don't respect the child's boundaries because there are no boundaries. There are no boundaries because they're not even acknowledging the fact that the kid, you, are a separate entity, a separate person. You are an extension of them. You are the most expensive item that they have ever had. Children are the most expensive things that we'll ever have because they're so expensive. They cost so much money to raise and take care of and everything. I mean, it's just like it's the most expensive handbag you'll ever have. And I'm not saying that the narcissistic parent doesn't love you. But I'm saying that their love is derived from the fact that you are part of them. Not the fact that you are an independent individual with your own feelings and thoughts and boundaries. Because your feelings and thoughts really don't matter to some degree. To some degree. And there are no boundaries when you're dealing with a narcissistic parent. The second type of narcissist, which is very different from the engulfing narcissist, is the ignoring narcissist, right? Hmm. These particular parents have very little interest involved in their children, okay? These ignoring type of narcissists see the boundary between themselves and their children very well. And because of seeing that boundary and seeing their children as so different from them, they often neglect to take care of their children. They neglect to take care of their children or show an active interest in their lives. Do you see what I'm saying? 
It's almost like I had to have you. I didn't really want you. You're totally different from me. You go to your side of the house. I'll go to my side of your of the house. I'm going to do my thing. You do your thing. I don't really want to hear a lot out of you. Okay? You're lucky to be here. And let's just kind of like cohabitate. Okay, do you understand? That is a good definition of what an ignoring narcissist is. You know, it's almost like the fact of, well, you know, you know, you really kind of put a damper on the party. Okay, life was pretty good until you showed up. But because you're here, we're going to have to live with it. Not very happy about it, but you do your thing, I'll do my thing, and let's just try to get along. Okay, as long as I can still go to my cocktail hours and still do my stuff... I'm okay, as long as you don't make it hard for me to live my life. And some of you have parents or had parents like this. Like this. I had a friend of mine in high school, and um, so my parents and her parents were the exact opposite parents. My parents were more like helicopter parents. Um, You know, I I really, I think my curfew was 8 o'clock at night, like my senior year, like 8 p.m. Okay, seriously, I'm not kidding. It might have been nine. It might have been nine my senior year. I am not kidding, okay? My good friend in high school was a year older than me, and her parents were the opposite. Like, if she didn't come home for a week, they wouldn't even realize it or wouldn't even bother calling the police, okay? Just that simple, and I remember one time um, I got we got in trouble. I went to a concert. Oh my gosh! And I I wanted us to go meet this band. Okay, and it was like you know I would I would occasionally do things in my life that was all about Burgess. Okay, because I got tired of following the rules, man. The rules were so tough in my household. They were tough, tough, tough rules. I mean, like the rules that are like really hard to live with. And so anytime I had a chance. To do something I would. It was very rarely. It was about once every year I would pull a Burgess stunt. And this one was going to meet a band that I really wanted to meet. I met Pearl Jam. And I had to drive out about an hour away from my home. And I picked up my friend, Carrie. And we went out there and we got to meet the band. And they signed my shirt. We had And they invited us to an upcoming concert for free. And it was so cool. And I remember coming back, I got a little lost. Okay, I was, you know... I was in high school. I got a little, but I got us back. It just took us a little bit of time. I really didn't get us that lost. It just took us so much, so much time to wait and to go out there and do everything. And when I came back, I got home and I was about to drop Carrie off and I was already late for curfew. Okay. And I remember Carrie's like, Hey, you're already late. My parents don't care. Okay. You know, they don't care at all. So why don't we drop you off? Why don't we go to your house first? And then I'll deal with my stuff later. And so we went to my house and, my dad got very angry with me about how I was late for curfew and how I'm going to get grounded and all that good stuff. And I remember, though, my dad was like, we need to take Carrie home. And we took her home. And her parents didn't even know she was gone. They didn't even know she was gone. And that's what I'm saying. It's like it was such an extreme. I'm getting in trouble and getting grounded. Okay. And her parents didn't even know she was gone. And so I I think when you look at these two types, it's very interesting to look at it and to understand where you fit in when it comes to that. And some of your parents are not narcissists or weren't narcissists at all. Maybe they were just kind of overbearing or strict or just really cared about you or real intent on your safety, security, that kind of thing. But, you know, some of your parents were highly narcissist. Maybe even both of them were. And it just depended on the way that the narcissism was exposed. Was it engulfing or was it ignoring? And so now I really want to focus on some of the major signs that depict the fact that you had a parent or have a mother or father who is a narcissist. So let's begin to talk about those right now. The first major sign that your mom or dad, parents were are narcissists the first thing is that they use guilt trips to their advantage guilt is a major word in the family you will feel guilted about most anything and everything even if you weren't raised in the catholic church you will feel guilty okay that was a joke so guilt is very interesting when it comes to this relationship the guilt of doing what you want to do the guilt of not doing exactly what they want you to do 
this whole guilt and this shame, guilt and shame, blame whole deal gets in the way when you're dealing with narcissistic parents. And it's very interesting to me because I find that guilt is one of those things that unfortunately we live with for our life once we've been exposed to it and we haven't dealt with it. Okay, when we haven't dealt with the guilt. And I always think that guilt and shame go hand in hand. They tend to go hand in hand because when we feel bad about something we did, we feel bad about it, we feel guilty, right? And then the guilt brings what? Shame. The shame that we did it. And I found that mostly parents who are full-on narcissists have a tendency of laying the guilt down thick. And to me, guilt and shaming is a way to control. Okay, It's a method of control, um, that constant guilt trip, and they guilt trip you into doing what they want you to do. Okay, So you don't want to do it. You want to do your own thing. You're over there thinking about it, and then they guilt you into doing something, right? And and a lot of times, too, what might come after it is, you know, I've done everything for you. I've always been there for you. I've done so much for you. I love you so much. I'm there for you. I've sacrificed my entire life for you. You know, and, and it's like you feel horrible about it because they've sacrificed all this stuff. You know, you're like, oh, my God, I guess I owe them this. I owe them what I have to do. And I found that this guilt thing is like a nasty, gnarly, stinky perfume, stinky cologne that many of us live our lives with. And we don't realize where it came from. And it came from a narcissistic upbringing and feeling as though you have to do even what you don't want to do to make your parents happy. Joining me in studio today are my friends Elizabeth and Bill Cooper, Precious Paws supplement creators and dog lovers, here to offer some awesome suggestions to help us with our dog's health. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Ashley. We wanted to talk today about some effective alternatives for dogs with arthritis and hip and joint issues, something that's all natural. Uh, most people know about glucosamine. They know about chondroitin and how effective that is, and it is effective in dogs. A lot of people know about MSM. What a lot of people don't know about is is, is a couple items that have been around for years and years. The first one is turmeric. It's kind of an Eastern medicine deal that's gained a lot of, of popularity recently for its anti-inflammatory properties. A lot of people take it. It works well in dogs. Uh, another item is the boswella, and what that is is Indian frankincense. That's also been used for centuries as a natural anti-inflammatory and a pain reducer. One of the things it does is speeds up healing and increases blood flow. It controls production of antibodies. And a lot of studies have suggested that the combination of boswella and turmeric have another beneficial effect just with the interactions of their two phytochemicals working together to help prevent toxicity. So where can we find out more information about all natural effective alternatives to arthritis? Hey, Ashley, if they would just go to PreciousPawsHealth.com, they can find out a lot of information. As a matter of fact, all five of these ingredients is in one simple tablet at PreciousPawsHealth.com. Stay tuned when I return. I'm going to be revealing some of the major signs that you have a mom or dad that are full-on narcissists, and it'll actually explain a lot about your adult life. Live your true life perspectives with me, your host. We'll be back this time in Two Shakes. This is Jake Busey, and you're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. On today's show, I'm talking about narcissists. I'm talking about your parents. Were your parents or are your parents narcissists? Whether mom or dad or both, we're talking about that today on Live Your True Life Perspectives. And right before the break, I was talking about the good old guilt trip. How many of you have been guilted your entire life into doing things you didn't want to do? You know what I'm saying? Well, I brought you in this world and I can take you out. I always love that comment. That was always kind of a very sadistic, kind of like kind of creepy comment. But yeah, I've heard it before. <laughs> but also, I've done so much for you. And if it wasn't for me, you would have nothing. Think about it. How much guilt we feel. And I understand the fact is they did bring us in this world. I get it. And if we hadn't have been brought in this world, then okay. But the fact is that a lot of times in these guilt trips, we sacrifice ourselves. We do. We don't do what we want to do because we want to do what we want to make everybody happy. 
We don't want to rock the boat. Especially with our parents. When we're like, you know, being raised, like they're our end-all, be-all to life's existence. We have been surrounded, and in this corporate culture of our parents, or the corporate culture, right, where we automatically assume that we got to do this and this is healthy, even though most of us were raised in households that were far from healthy. I mean, and I'm going to give it to it. I'm going to throw this out there. I do believe that for the most part, parents did the best they could. But I also believe that if you look back in the past years, therapy and going to a therapist or seeking a life coach or whatever, I feel like that's been really taboo. And so dealing with people's own issues and coupled with raising children, think about it. Okay. So they're going to raise the children even during their own issues, even when they have their issues and their problems right now. And so I'm saying, you know, a lot of this is based on what? Based on the way that your parents were raised. Okay? Your mom and dad were raised with parents that were probably full-on narcissists. If you're figuring out that your parents are narcissists right now, most people don't get off the reservation. Most people stay. Okay? They stay in that same path. They do the same thing. You know, that's why abuse... Is, is is something that is circular because when people are physically abused and then they bring that back into a marriage and, and, and so forth and so on, it's a cycle, the cycle of abuse. And it's hard to end cycles because how do we end cycles? We have to change ourselves. We have to get right with us. We have to do right by us, and we have to understand why we got into that cycle to begin with. Why? When it comes to the abuse cycle, okay, if you saw abuse in your family, your mom or dad or what have you, I'm sure if your dad was abusing your mom, your dad's dad was abusing the grandmother. Do you see what I'm saying? It's a learned response. And it's the same thing with the narcissism to some degree. If their parents were full-on narcissists and that's the way they were raised and that seemed normal. Because remember, normal is all that you've seen. It's not because you had five or six different options and, and the universe said, well, you can be, you, you can come from this family or you can come from that family. And this is the way they do things over this family. Are you interested in that? No, you got the one family. And that was normal because that's the only option. It's not like you had a lot of stuff to springboard out of. It wasn't like you had all these examples of of amazing parenting for you to sit there and go back and go, you know what, this just isn't right. You know, y'all are all into self, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I think that y'all are defined as narcissists. You know, I might be five years old, but I know quite well by now. No. So we went with it. And because we didn't realize what it was, we just thought that's just the way parents are. That's just the way they are. We went with it, and we took that into our adulthood. We took that into our marriages. Some of you are on second, third marriages. Have you dealt with the baggage? Have you dealt with the luggage? It's stuff for us to deal with. You know, the next major sign that you have a narcissistic mother or father is that they did not respect your boundaries. Okay? They did not respect your boundaries. It's like you had no alone time. You had no private space to call your own. Many of you had parents that would go through your room and private belongings without even asking you. Right? And sometimes they would even use the stuff that they found against you. And I I work with clients where their parents would go into their room and rifle through their stuff and take what they wanted or make comments or judgments. And they never had a place to put their own stuff. They never had their own privacy. Okay? And there's something to be said about, you know, having a little bit of privacy. I mean, we're individuals. We're individual souls. We're allowed to have a little bit of privacy in our life. You know, like to close the door. Or to have your own little space. And many of us didn't have that growing up. So there were really no boundaries. I can go through any of your stuff. Your stuff is my stuff. Your room is my room. And so think about how that has matriculated in your life and the kind of people that are around you 
Are you in a marriage right now where your spouse is constantly going through your things? Are you in a marriage right now where your spouse is constantly looking through your phone? Even when you haven't given them permission. I had a client recently who woke up in the middle of the night to find his wife going through his cell phone. And I don't think that was the first time. He's not having an affair. He's not cheating. But you know what? She was raised in a family where you go through whatever you go through. You check and you snoop on whoever you want to check on. And it's just customary. There is no allowed privacy. You do not get any rights. And see how that's worked for her? Do you understand? Like, we bring this into our marriage. We bring this into our lives. We bring to us what we're used to having. So if we're used to having people walk all over us, well, guess what? We're going to bring a lot of those people to the party all the time. If we're used to people taking advantage of us or making us feel guilty, I bet a lot of us are surrounded by friends that make us feel bad. Not about friends lifting us up. It's about the friends that make us feel bad. Right? How many of you out there were put on a guilt trip all the time by your parents for everything you did, and now you're sitting back listening to this show right now, and you're like, oh my God, Ashley. My spouse makes me feel guilty. Or my children make me feel guilty. Or my friends make me feel guilty. My family makes me feel guilty. Some of you have family that just guilts you all the time. And has probably guilted you into doing all kinds of stuff that you probably shouldn't have done. I've had many clients that have come into my office and talked about how they just wanted to deaden the the guilt. Whether that was alcohol or drugs or a combination thereof. It's something to be said about that. You know, another sign that you may have a narcissistic mother or a father is they had a tendency of not listening to you or caring about your feelings whatsoever. Many of you had nobody to listen to you. Like, you would talk about your feelings and they would be, oh, okay, that's great. You know, you're wearing your feelings on your sleeve. You felt like you could never share your feelings with them. Possibly they'd make fun of you. Or maybe they would turn the conversation about themselves. Oh, well, you've had a bad day? Why don't you hear about me? Oh, you think you hurt? What about me? Oh, you think you're in pain? Well, let me tell you about my pain. And maybe somehow whatever issue you face... As a child, it was spun into something with your family. And I think this is very interesting because when you think about this and you think about it realistically, a lot of us don't realize that we're one and up on other people as well. Think about it. When somebody tells you something that happened, oh, well, you got to hear what happened to me. Somebody tells you about how sick they got. Oh, well, you know, the other day I got so sick I went to the hospital. It's not about listening to the pain and suffering that they've gone through. It's about talking over them and expressing how your pain and suffering is so much harder and bad compared to their suffering. Because you've got to win. And I think that's part of it. As a narcissist, the concept of winning all challenges is important, even if it's not a challenge. Even if it's not a competition. I'm going to win over your pain. My pain is worse than your pain. Ha ha ha. I do not necessarily listen to your pain. And what is that about? Because it's all about me. It's all about me. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. It's very interesting. Another sign that you have a narcissistic mother or father or both parents is that they use the technique of gaslighting as well. Gaslighting, I've done a couple of videos on YouTube on gaslighting. Very interesting scenario. There was a movie actually made about it too. Gaslighting is used to control the other person. And when I return, I'll be talking about what gaslighting is about and how it might have been used on you as a child by either your mother, father, or both. Stay tuned. Live your true life perspectives with your host, me, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back in. I'll be back this time in two shakes. You could be my luck. Get in here. You're listening to Perspectives with Ashley Burgess. Welcome back live to Live Your True Life Perspectives, and I'm your host, Ashley Burgess. 
On today's show, I've been exposing the major signs that indicate that you have a narcissistic mother or father or both parents and what that means in your life. You know, right before the break, I was talking about using gaslighting. It's the number four major sign that you have a mother or father who's a narcissist. And oftentimes we don't even recognize what gaslighting truly is. I mean, they made a movie about it, for Christ's sakes. Gaslighting is something that people can control you with. It's like a psychological type manipulation. And it means that people, when they use gaslighting, deliberately make you feel crazy. When they use gaslighting, they make you feel as though you doubt your own sanity in order to gain uh, control. And when people use gaslighting long enough, it will lead to the inherent development of personal self-doubt. And I find that very interesting because I've seen it in my office where people have obviously been victims of gaslighting as a child in their adolescence and how that it causes them to self-doubt themselves in everything they do, whether it's their career or you know, finding a mate or whatever it is, it's, they, they're always fearful that they're going to screw up. Okay. And you might want to check it out. I've done some videos on YouTube on gaslighting. There's a lot of information out there. And uh, it's, it's very interesting because it is a, it's a psychological manipulation to make you feel like you're going insane or that you're losing it or you don't know better, and you, you need to look to somebody else for the answers because you're so out of control, you're not thinking straight, you're not thinking clearly, you're making bad decisions, and gaslighting is the way to do that. Another major sign that your mother or father or both are narcissists or were narcissists is the fact that sometimes narcissistic parents make it very clear that they have a favorite child. That one of their children is the golden child, the child that can do no wrong. And then the other child, well, the other child is horrible, can always do everything wrong, never listens, is always getting into trouble, while the other one is always being uh, loved on and, and things are bought for and, and all that kind of stuff. You see what I'm saying? And I mean, I know that Harry Potter is a, is a large extreme, but you remember Harry Potter movies? You know, when you see him and he lived under the cupboard, yes, he wasn't their original child and they kind of got him because his parents died. But, you know, there's a lot of folks out there that I hear that are actual blood relatives, you know, sister, brother, where the sister was revered and the brother was treated horribly. Or whether, you know, the parents adopted a child because they couldn't have children. They adopted the child and then, you know, she ends up getting, the wife gets pregnant, you know, like a year later and they can't stand the adopted child and they make it very clear. And they tell everybody who their favorite is. Okay, and that's really sad. It's really sad because um, the one child is, is seen as perfect and the other one becomes the black sheep. Right? And it's so interesting because how many of you know people that call themselves the black sheep? Well, they call themselves the black sheep because they were probably the child that wasn't loved that much or the child that wasn't good enough. And they were told it every day of their life. This stuff lives with us forever unless we're willing to break those bonds of unhealthy living. And it's not about the person. I think it's more about the disease. I think that narcissism is a disease. And I think that it needs to be the person that's a narcissist needs to seek help and guidance from a therapist, from a licensed clinical psychologist, or from a life coach. And I believe that it needs to be looked at like a broken arm. Okay? And so to look at somebody and say they're a horrible person, is that the case or are their actions out of control? Are their actions showing that they probably were raised in a narcissistic household? Do their actions and attitudes represent that? Because oftentimes we're a product of our environment. You hear people saying, I never want to be like my mother. Oh, God, please don't let me be like my father. Oh, I hope I'm not like my parents. You know, you hear people talking about that all the time. And then what happens? They become their parents. So it's a product of our environment. It's a big product. You know, the sixth major sign, the sixth major sign that your parents are narcissists 
is that they do not accept or did not accept criticism. Okay? They can criticize everybody else all day. They can criticize you up and down all day about the things that you've done wrong and how you've screwed up in your life and how you're never going to amount to anything. But when it comes to them, they do no wrong. They do no wrong. Criticism. And when you criticize them in any way, you're asking for it. Okay? You're asking for it. Because usually, if your mom or dad is or are a narcissist, they usually react in an extreme way to this type of conversation. There might have been some screaming involved, maybe some actual hitting or slapping involved um, to basically derail the conversation. The last time I had... I criticized a narcissist, which was not my parents, but it was somebody else that I had a good relationship with at one point. The last time I did that, I learned that when you criticize a narcissist, they are going to yell at you. They are going to scream. They are going to do whatever they have to do to prove their point. And this person screamed and yelled and told me about how uh, they have done everything for me and, and how I'm basically, you know, a turd that needs to, you know, deal with my situation. And you know what? I I knew that after you criticize a narcissist, they're going to exit stage right. Usually. Now, if it's your parents, they're not going to probably exit out on you. But they're going to yell and scream at you for a while. They're going to derail the conversation. There is not going to be any criticism of them anymore. And, you know, life will go on. And there won't be any talk more about that conversation. Because remember, they do no wrong. It's all about self, but but the facade of the narcissist is that they're all in control, when in reality, the narcissist is not in control. The reality of the narcissist is that they're insecure. They're unhappy. They haven't found happiness in their own life. They're trying to figure out who they are, and they feel that if they control you enough, they at least have control of something in their life. By controlling you... They feel that they are in control. And I might need to say that one more time. Narcissistic parents will try to control their children for the most part because they feel out of control in their own life. Okay. And so as I go through these major signs, and I will continue this discussion in the next show because there's different signs that you need to be aware of as well as ending the cycle and finding your true happiness and realizing where some of these unhealthy factors and symptoms and signs are coming from. And I'm making you aware of that and offering you the knowledge to see that and to make these changes in your life. Stay tuned. Live your true life perspectives with me, your host, Ashley Burgess. We'll be back this time in three shakes. <laughs> 